Hi friends and welcome back to a brand new episode here on Queer. Boom! Oh my gosh, today we have one iconic episode for you. I have the privilege of hosting the one, the only, the queen, the icon, the legend, the diva. Queen, icon, legend, diva. Didi Winston. In this episode, we talk about her journey into becoming the powerful woman she is today. Didi opens up about what it was like growing up in Barbados as a trans woman, some of the struggles that she had to go through, and how she has gotten to a place of living her best, authentic self with such a healthy, healthy, positive mindset. Didi is one powerful, positive human being. I mean, I wanna say she's like the matriarch of the LGBTQ community here in Barbados. Like, that, in my eyes, at least. So I'm super excited to share this episode with you and I, I truly love and respect Didi so much. Don't forget to check out our podcast. It's on Spotify and Apple Podcasts where you can listen to the entire story and I fully recommend you doing that. Didi is filled with so many stories. Also, check out our Patreon page for as little as $3 a month. You can support the queer journey. Hey everybody, it's me, Didi Winston, the one and only, the queen, the diva, the icon, the legend. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Mwah. raised by my grandparents okay. and my mom and dad they were busy with work but they knew me and they knew from the jump this is a little princess what are we gonna do yeah and even if they did not like it i really did not care because i live for me you live for even you. at that age you were yeah. so certain I, yeah like... because my grandmother from my father's side and my grandfather from my mother's side would always tell me you are special Absolutely. and when they told me that nobody could tell me nothing you know there were times i was told oh um you can't play with this because you are different and i'm like okay fine i don't need to play with you i can find other people to play with and if i can't find them to play with i will do stuff by myself yeah, yeah i always say if, if you and for me i would i would always ask who's my hero and growing up, there was no one like me. So I had to put on my own cape and yeah. become my shiro. And amidst, amidst all of the, oh, you're soft, you're girly, yeah. you are, you know, sissy. And me as a child growing up, I always used to tell myself, I'm a star. I am a star. You love that. You know, so you could tell me shit. I didn't care. So your your childhood, you did have moments where you got like like bullied and stuff, they, but you just they, had folks on were, them. There were people who tried it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come at me. <laughs> who tried it. In life, you would meet the non-brands, as I call them. People who don't matter, darling. Ooh. Yes, the non-brands, darling. <laughs> okay. And I always tell people, non-brands don't exist in my world. Yeah. The negativity, no. Put it where? Back there. And you, Yeah, why focus on it? You exactly. Know? Why even entertain it? Exactly. I always, I always ask, like, why the hell do you care? Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. you are you. That person does nothing for you. So why are you giving them your energy, honey? No. You know what? And by the time we're focusing so much of our energy on them, they've probably forgotten about exactly. it. Exactly. Moved on with their Moved life. On. Don't even I'm, care. They're going like, oh, they don't like you. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Oh, fabulous. We'll, Good. We can yes, honey. beep a bunch of things up. Yes. Beep, 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 beep. But did you find that hard? No, not having any representation or visibility. I would always ask questions. Why is it um, I am who I am, but there's nobody else like me. It's only when I got older and you were allowed to go to different parties and stuff, you met one or two other girls. I'm like, hey, honey, yes, I'm not the only one in these streets. Yes, my first ever party, honey. I was like, we exist. Yeah, <laughs> wow. It, it was it was amazing for me because you would I would always think. 
Sony me. There's no one like me, but I'm going to be the best me there is. And were, so were you like quite effeminate growing up, even like through high school and stuff? And I was a woman, darling. Yeah. <laughs> There was one time I went to a party and I was, I dressed really butch, the nice big jeans, the boots, which were so heavy. Oh, sorry. So heavy. You're fine, you're fine. And I was like, how do they do this? And everybody was like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Why are you dressed like that? Is something wrong? Are you having a midlife crisis? I'm like, no, it's a, it's a party. For me, it was fun. It was different. Yeah. And, but it was, at one point, it was like, I don't know how they do it. I'm never going to do this again. But at that point, it was You fun. were testing. Yeah, like playing around. There we go. I was like... Well, this, this is not is... for me. No. Yeah. Trial and error. Pow, pow, pow. <laughs> okay. what, how old were you when you went to your first party? I was... I think it was 1920. And that's when you found, like, be girls like you? Like, like, at school, you had... There was this one guy. Oh, honey. His name is Malcolm. I think he is in New York. Hi, Malcolm. And Malcolm was fabulous. Wow. This beautiful black queen, honey. And wow. he'd be like, hey! He was loud as hell, though. I found Malcolm let people mesh him as in, oh, you should do this, you should do that. And I, I would always tell him, just be you. Do just you, be yeah. you. He was older than I am, but I'm, once again, coming into self, you have to know you. You have to know what you want. You know, because if you don't, you can be easily... Yeah. Yeah, you have to be so confident in yourself. Yeah, you I've know? always been confident. I, I I've always it's been. Uh, I walk into a room, I don't care. You could be the Prime Minister of Barbados. You could be Prince whoever. I am the diva darling. Yes. I'm in charge. There we go. How you doing? I turn looks. Exactly. Yeah. Slay all day. You yeah. Know, but still giving respect. Yeah. You know? And that's another thing too. Respect yourself. Once you respect yeah. yourself, People could throw hate, they could throw the end, the evil, the nastiness, that's at you. I mean, yeah. that's at them. Absolutely. You know, too bad for you. This is me. So when did you start to transition? I always knew who I was. Yeah. But I always said the body doesn't fit the mindset. Yeah. I was, at what age did you know? I always knew. Yeah. From but it was how to get there. And with no representation. There we go. So it was like, hmm, I know I have to get these. Yeah. I have to get these and have to, yeah. So how am I going to get them? I would always, I would always ask questions. Yeah. You know, of course, there weren't many trans women in Barbados who I could look to at that point. And of course, as you get older, education kicks in. You learn and you, you inquire, you research and you're like, okay, I can get this. I can do that. And... Bit by bit, you got little quirks of education. You can take this to do this. You can soften the skin. I went to a doctor, but it was not for transition. It was just like to get a checkup and stuff. And I said, I need to be more me. And he was like, what does that mean? I said, more me. You know, and we had a talk. Of course, I was young. So, of course, he couldn't what, give me information. What year was this kind of, do you think? I was young. I was 19, in my 20s. In your 20s, yeah. Yes, yeah, so of course. Back then, doctors were not allowed to say certain things. And then, too... But I would imagine doctors wouldn't even have that sort of education. But that's the thing, too, because I was like, hmm. But I, 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 was, I always wondered, you know, how to go about things. That was always in my head. Yeah. You know, how do you get there? And who, who do you, can you talk to? Exactly. And who would keep your, your business confidential? And what were some of those conversations that you had with the doctor like? Like, what did they say? Because um, I know, I know from... In the past, in a lot of countries around the world, a lot of doctors or or societies viewed yeah. um, being trans as a mel mental illness. Correct, honey. Did you get any of that? No, I. I'm, once again, I'm so lucky to to have met the right people because I've heard stories, mm -hmm. and I I personally would have not a doctor out. How dare you tell me I'm crazy? How dare yeah. you tell me I'm deluded? How dare you tell me I'm a freak? No, I'm not. I am me. I just need you to educate me on how to better me, how to beautify this canvas, as I put it. Absolutely. I love what I was asked questions. Have you ever dealt with a trans girl? Um, what are your views on trans people? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I become the Oprah Winfrey free honey. Yeah. And I they do. were pretty open to it, like the daughter. Yeah, everything. yeah, because from the jump, you always have to tell, I always tell people, this is what I want. This is what I want to Can do. Can you help me? Can you help me? Yes or no? Study it, get back to me. 
because you don't want to hear hum. In that case, thank you. Thanks so much. Love you too. Yeah. Move on from that. And was there many trans women in Barbados transitioning at that time? Did you know many? Not really. No. I know of women in the, tra in the trans experience, but yeah. I was too, I didn't want to ask questions. Yeah. Like you would see it and you'd be like, wow, she's gorgeous. Yeah. I want, you I want that. that. But then as once again, as you got old, you met them one on one and you have conversation, you learn and you grow and you glow. Yeah. And they would give you a little hint, the other person. So so you pull from everybody. There was this queen, I would always call her Shibli, older queen, very feminine, not transition, very feminine. And she taught me to use knife and fork. She taught me how to speak, wow. how to sit, etiquette. And she, I, and I would spend hours at her house just listening. How did you meet her? I met her through my trans mom. Okay. She came to get something made, and I was like, fabulous. Yeah. I was just in awe. And even though she was still, she was not trans, like femme queen. Yeah. I was like, wow. She wore her slacks, a nice butt pull in button shirt, crisp collar, and this beautiful brown bag. Who could forget that brown bag? And she would just walk, pure class. We would talk about things and people, how to carry yourself, if you find yourself in an altercation, how to go about it. And, and growing up, there's so many other people I met who, who gave you advice on life and people and, and how to be. How did you meet your, tra um, your trans mom? I, I was a young dancer and we had to get costumes made. And we were told, oh, we have to go be married. How old were you? I was 17, 18. Wow. Yeah. And we were told, well, you have to go by Teresa, Teresa Medjo and all that stuff. And the first time I met Miss Teresa, I was like, I love you. And Teresa, open-minded, very, very gorgeous on an international level. And then you would yeah. see the photos, cause back in the day, in my trans mother's time, you had, you had the queen of the bees. That was a big pageant. She opened my mind to not putting yourself in a box. So she kind of just took you under her yes, wing. Yes, like a mama. Like, she, knew, she knew about you and she was just like, yes. come, let me help you. Let me Do guide you. Yes. She would always put you in your place. Yeah. The whole thinking negative, not in my house, honey. No, 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 no. Not today. You know, always think to help others. Always be empathetic. Always. And I learned that from a very young age. You have to be kind. You have to be kind. A smile, it's so easy to smile and pass it on. And it can change someone's exactly. day tremendously. I, I was working in town and this lady, like, where were people, of course, people passing. Oh, look at all these in this store, these in there. And I'm like, okay, fine. You get used to it. And this lady came in the store and she said, hello. I said, hi. She said, how are you? I said, I'm fine. It's a little banter. And she was like, can I have a hug? I was like, sure. Mm -hmm. And I, have, I said, what's going on? Talk to me. And she, she opened her bag. I'm not going to fight. Mm -hmm. She opened my hair bag and she had a whole set of pills. And she said, I am to that point. And I'm like, my heart started racing. And I said, Dee Dee, think fast. I said, girl, I know how you feel. I know wow. how you feel, girl. And at that point, I'm, I'm in her bag taking out the pills as we talk. I said, you don't need these. You don't need these. And I bought her a necklace with my money. Wow. I said, every time you feel this, every time I touch this necklace and realize somebody loves me. You never know. You never know. You're and absolutely it, right. It takes nothing to be kind. It doesn't, you know, no. and it doesn't take that much to like smile or treat people kindly. Beautifully. Yes. yes. Ooh, power and positivity, <laughs> baby. I know that um, the trans experience in Barbados is not the most kindest or mm. accepted what are some experiences that you've been through of adversity or faced in barbados looking for a job yeah as a femme queen i worked in stores where i wore a shirt and tie well, of course everybody knew well, that's a queen yeah. my face would be beat my hair would be done but of course you're doing the male attire even though to me it was just fashion i was told oh well we 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 like people like you, but, you know, I was like, okay, thanks. Why am I having this conversation with you? Because at the end yeah. of the day, 
you're going to tell me no. Mind you. It's like a and, subtle way of being transphobic too, yeah, you know, exactly. like them trying to like cover I, themselves. Mm, but like, mm, I, went know to, I went to interview for a job at the boutique and the lady, there were two women and one was like, so um, do you, do you invite your friends to your workplace? And I was like, why would I invite people to my workplace? This is a workplace. It's a boutique on list. They're coming to buy clothes. Okay. And then she goes, like, um, so if you wear an, if you wore an inappropriate outfit to work and we talked to, I said, stop. Why would I wear an inappropriate outfit to work? This is a job. This is a fashion store, which means you must look amazing. So from that energy, you're like, Ugh. Exactly. Then she goes like, so um, does your boyfriend bring visit you at work? I said, ma'am, I never said I had a boyfriend. And if I did have a boyfriend, why would he be coming to my workplace? I said, you know what? <laughs> um, thank you so much for your time. And thank you for this having me. This job isn't for me yet. There we go. Have a good one. That time, the other lady was like, she looked at her like, what are you doing? You know, and that's another door that closed and I kicked another one down. There, But there is, you know, there is a lot of um, ignorance in the world. Yes, there in is. General, in general. But um, definitely in Barbados, I, I feel like people are are almost scared to educate themselves. But that's the thing. I don't what? know why. Educate yourself to the differences. And my thing is to stop looking at the person. Look at what he or she can bring to your business. Yeah. Look at the ideas this person has. And I get so mad when people go like, oh, well, you know, um, because of society, <laughs> you, you're, and I always said, for me, you're not about making money. Yeah. You're not about having a business. You're about pleasing people who don't give a fuck about you. Yeah. At the end of the day, girls like myself and whoever else under the LGBTQ umbrella bring a certain fierceness to the job. Come on now. Yeah. You know, do your, do the job. This is what you need to be done. You know, and I find a lot of people tend to. Please society, please their friends and family, and forget about forget the main person himself. in the picture, yourself. Oh, oh, oh exactly. baby. You said it, though. It's absolutely right. People are so quick to adjust and shift. Oh, I have this one quote I found the other day. Mm -hmm. Let go and find you. Isn't that stunning? Like, I think it's fabulous. It's Let so, go. And, all, yeah. all, that, all that negative, mm -hmm. fuzzy energy. Yeah, let, let it, go. it go. For me, if you don't understand it, educate yourself to it. Absolutely. If you are scared of it, educate yourself to it. If you don't like it, leave it alone. You're powerful. You have a strong mindset and you are a star, but a lot of people aren't like you, you know? I understand that. That's yeah. why I have to do what I got to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, when Yours, yeah. my sister or brother sees this, they go, like, you know what? Miss Dee Dee did this, so can I. Yeah. Or at least I will try to get there, you know? And I, I always tell people, if today is not your day, there's always tomorrow. I always call it puberty. We blossom when we are ready. Yeah. You understand? But if you need big sis, call me. Yes, honey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Connect. Because I do I do understand that everybody's strong, yeah. everybody's bold. I get that, but still try your best to be authentic. your authentic self. Absolutely. There's yeah. nothing more powerful in this one life that honey, we have exactly. to do it. Yeah. Because sometimes I sit and listen to guys talk and I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's exhausting. Mm. Yeah. You don't want this body to know. You don't do this. You don't do that. You can't do this. I was hanging with some guys the other day and they were talking about how a man should be. And I'm like, how though? How should a man be? Because I'm looking at 10 men who look totally different. So what are you telling me? What are you saying? Oh, you can't sit like this. You can't sit like this. You can't do like this. You can't rear her like this. I said, are y'all fucking kidding me? Everybody's different. Oh. Stop, stop, stop. You need to open your mind to the fact that you're not the only person on this planet. Really? Study it. You're not and the only person. And there's not only two binaries of gender. There is so much the, more. It, it's so, there's so many different colors yeah. to this kaleidoscope. Yeah. And they keep telling people, stop. Educate. Like, a lady said, if my daughter was this, I would disown her. And I said... 
I am not your daughter and I heard what you said, but I do hope for her sake that she becomes very strong and when you get nasty with her, she has her two feet to land on. And when she does, I hope she takes off running. And I hope she doesn't have money because from the time she gets money, you will change. Believe you me. Oh, oh honey. they come running back. Yeah. Oh, that's my daughter. That's my son. I love him. No, you yeah. don't. When there's success or some exactly. sort of... Exactly. Which I, is I, a shame. Exactly. And the sad, the sad part is we as our authentic, kind selves forgive. Have you faced a lot of like ignorance in Barbados, like on the streets or just people that are like, like you know, like when? feel like they need to say stuff to you or do something to you? There, there, there are times when you meet the non-brands and you're and, and you, I love that. By and the you way. stop and you're like, is that all you have to say to me? Because really, what you just said to me is like, huh, another ignorant non-brand person. That's it. Yeah. You know, why am I giving you my energy? And there are men who will be the, oh, you, you're not real. Okay. Thanks for sharing. That's you, boo. I know who I am. You understand? Yeah. And nobody will take that from me. Nobody can take that from me. Yeah. And if this is your take on it, more power to you. But Absolutely. not today. I love that mentality. I think it's so powerful. You know, like, you know, people can say, yeah. word, people can say all these words. And if you're so confident in yourself and who you yeah. are, you won't let it affect but it, you. But like, it's not what is the worst I, someone can say to you? Yeah. When are you going to see them again? There we go. Like, I was telling uh, <laughs> this, this is girl. so powerful, though. And she was like, oh, she called me fat. Bitch, you are fat. <laughs> Stop giving these people your energy. It's true. Like, Did she say you were ugly? It. There we go. Did she say you were ugly? No. Did she say you smell nasty? No. Then why are you giving her, you're a fat girl. You're a fat, beautiful woman. Stop. It's true though. You know, once again, it is not what people call you, it's what you answer to. If they Absolutely. call you a derogatory name and you re and you No, is that you? Yeah. Is that you? No, it's not. So why are you giving them your energy? Yeah. You understand? If you're feminine and somebody calls you a girl, say thank you and keep it pushing. Absolutely. You understand? If somebody said, yo, you're gay. Thank you. Keep, Keep it, it pushing. pushing. Embrace yourself. Okay, so how was um, how was dating for you like in Barbados? Uh, <laughs> I don't believe you did it. Why, why are you going to go there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a relationship type girl. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to men, I don't deal with the bullshit. So quick to dismiss. But um, I had my first boyfriend open my eyes to so many things. Yeah. I was the idiot when I say that, not literally, but when it came to the relationship, oh, I, we, we can't be seen too close, and don't touch my hand. And yeah, I was that girl. Why? And he was like, and because I was letting society. You were too focused on what people on the outside would Yeah, think. and I was, I was young. He opened my eyes to the fact that, why? Why are you letting people stop you from Showing love. Yes, honey. Showing and love. I have loved him. Oh, honey, my dark chocolate moussa. But there are a lot of guys who, oh my God. Some I'm not I'm not mad with the men. I'm just tired of the men. And they're bullshit. Yes. Yeah. If you are on the down low, leave a girl alone. Cause at the end of the day, I will still be single. Because I can't we can't go places. We can't do things. We can't be seen together. Oh, you're so popular. Okay, then stay in your lane. Leave me alone. Do you find there's a lot of like down low um, men in Barbados that? Well, for me, I find there are a lot of dumb men. <laughs> and when I say dumb, they give too much power to society. other people, mm -hmm. to society, to family. And they stop themselves from actually being loved or being yeah. in a, a, a faithful relationship or being in a, in a beautiful experience, if you get where I'm coming from. So I'm like, no, not today. No. Thanks for playing, though. Yeah. I gave them contracts, by the way. <laughs> Honey, your contract number one, your contract number two, you may be a contract number three. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for playing. This is one of my contracts. Pay all my bills, buy me groceries. 
keep me looking amazing. Because if you're down here, I want to be up there. Do not make me take the bus. I would take a cab or buy me a car. That's your contract number three. If you can sign on the dotted line, fine. I will be the best girlfriend ever. Honey. Okay. I love the contract. There we go. That's contract <laughs> number three. Contract number one is you just want a friend. Okay, sign on the dotted line. I don't need to tell anybody about you. No, no, no. Keep it real. Know your worth where the men are concerned. Absolutely. There we go. I, I just know that like the society, like for me, the biggest, what I've noticed from talking to a lot of people on, mm -hmm. on this set is like the biggest challenge here, why things aren't moving forward is because there's a lack of visibility, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lack of people coming out and um, being themselves. Mm -hmm. And what you've said today is, you know, what, this society in Barbados focuses so much on exterior, on like exactly. what people think about Who them cares? instead of just learning to love yourself. Love yourself. You yeah. have to love yourself first. Let's talk about your transition. When you, when you started your transition, what was that experience like? It was, it was freeing to be able to be closer to being your authentic self yeah as the woman you are yeah you know transitioning has been an eye-opener it has been a blessing and i know it's like receiving a christmas gift that you always wanted yeah yeah and and being comfortable to wear what you want to wear to do what you want to do to be who you want to be you become more confident not that i wasn't confident because i was always a woman hey even before the boobs and stuff. Yes, honey. That's about it, basically. Yeah. You know, just, just, just getting into yourself and, and molding and getting the mind, the body to sync with the mind. Yeah. You know. Beautiful. I know we're not crazy. We're just human beings stalling. Yeah, living our authentic self. Exactly. You're so powerful. You're so positive, And you're so confident in who you are. Mm -hmm. What is some mindset you want to offer to other people that are watching to get them to a place where you have gotten because obviously you've had a lot of experience but what mm -hmm. what is something you can say to your mindset about? your mindset should be i'm a star i am the ceo i am the hbic head bitch in charge Boom. nobody or nothing can stop me and if you find at any point in time that you come to a little stop -all, Call me. I will help you kick that door to fuck down. You're yeah. welcome. Stop letting people tell you what they want to do. That's why I always tell people when you have your kids, ask them. So what are you interested in? What do you want to do? Because at the end of the day, you're not your kid. Your child might want to yeah. go swimming. Don't put him or her in dancing because they will not like, like it. it. Yeah. They will just do it because mommy or daddy says, I should be a dancer. When really and truly, I want to swim. Find out from the kids what you want to do. And for parents who think you have LGBTQ people, LGBTQ um, sons and daughters, sit down. Educate yourself first and then sit with your child and go talk to me. Yeah. What upsets you? What don't you like? Have I been a good parent? You know, and your child, if they're ready, will tell you, I hate when you say this. I don't like when you do this. And if you think you can handle it, educate yourself. Yeah. And it's like, you know, why bring, why bring a kid into the world knowing that there's a possibility of them being LGBTQ? That's what and I'm then saying. you disowning them? There we go. It's really hard yes it is and i and i for me i always tell people we are all if you can't find family with them yeah look for family with us absolutely i love yes, it honey i love it yeah i just think it's so important for you know um lgbtq people go through so much on their own journey and experience yeah. before they find acceptance in themselves. Mm -hmm. And you know, the sole thing we're all looking for yeah. is acceptance from other people, which in turn, you need to accept yourself yeah, first. Yeah, you have to accept Definitely. yourself. But 
Mm-hmm. If your parents do accept you, that makes your whole journey so go. much more like, powerful. Like for me, when my grandfather and grandmother at that young age told me, you are special and you're going to be a star. Nobody could tell me shit. No, you could, nobody could tell me nothing. Yeah. And I always tell kid, my kids or whoever around me, remember you were loved. Yeah. You were loved. Even yeah. if that person doesn't like you, you, you are, are loved. loved. And if at any point in time you feel a little negative judge, Auntie Dee Dee, big sis, diva, queen, I'm here. Once again, it takes nothing to be kind. Nothing at all. Yeah, that's your biggest message today go. was and just that, and it's yeah, so true. It takes nothing to be kind. So true. And, and stop pleasing society, stop pleasing people, stop pleasing family, and start pleasing yourself. Because once you have that ammunition, honey, the world is your jam. Hey, man, How you for doing? that. Mark. Bring. What is one last thing you would like to say to anybody who is watching? To my LGBTQ family members, be you. It makes no sense being anybody else. Know your worth. It makes no sense being anybody else. Know where you belong. Know where you stand. Always be genuinely you. Life is too short not to be the human being that you are. Boom! Boom, honey! Uh, oh my oh, god. Yeah, she dance, she randy. She's that. <laughs> wow. Well, I, first of all, I just want to say massive privilege to have you on my set. Thank you. This for is the me. matriarch of the LGBTQ community in Barbados. Crown the original crown no. so, crown yeah. but uh, i'm not the matriarch but of course you I'm. are the matriarch <laughs> in the sense of like the way people speak about you and Aww, the energy you bring to you. a lot of lgbtq people here so Yay. in my eyes you are thank you baby thank you so uh, much but thank you for thank coming you. on here and inspiring oh, me too you're welcome i love babe. to hear your story thank you i am in awe Thank you, Didi, for sharing your story here on Queer. Didi has taught me that it is important to follow every feeling and live life for you. Find that authenticity and let it shine. At the end of the day, society is always going to be society. Some people are gonna love you for who you are and some people are not. So stop pleasing others and please yourself. Find your authentic self and just you and live for you babies come on anyways massive thank you to Didi I love and appreciate you thank you and I'll catch you next week for a brand new episode we're coming down to the final two people ah ciao for now